So I was sitting at my favorite reading chair, doing some reading, but I had this idea stuck in my head about an Arduino fiction book. It's something that I'd been thinking about for years. Thing is, I love prototyping with Arduino, but I also love to read. So I'm like, what if we could mash these ideas together? Like Tex-Mex, we could make a fun fiction story about Arduino stuff. So I finally reached out to a writer who it turns out was an electronics geek at heart, and I told him about this premise that I had. What I realized pretty quickly was the story that I had in mind was nothing like the story that was being written. It was a whole lot better. So we hired an illustrator who had mentored under a Marvel artist to work on some graphics. At first, we were just gonna do like one picture per chapter, but then Josh, our video editor, thought, hey, these pictures are great. Let's turn this thing into a graphic novel. So we have a book or a graphic novel. It's about a washed up theoretical physicist who gets hired by a company of ill repute to build something he doesn't know. Along the way, he gets help from his electronics hobbyist dad and a coworker who's trying to solve a decades old mystery. What you're watching right now is a voiceover of the book. It's basically, this is an audiobook with pictures in it. Maybe this is like a pictorama. I don't know what you call it. Anyway, that's what you're watching. We're going to be releasing chapters of this book on our YouTube channel. If you want to buy the book yourself, and it's a great way to support our channel, just go to the link in the description. You can pick up the book on Amazon. The Kindle version is also available, and we'll be releasing the audiobook version there as well. If you know somebody who likes sci-fi, enjoys reading, maybe into Arduino stuff, tell them about the book. We'd really appreciate it. Well, without further ado, here is the prelude to the Arduino Paradox. The Arduino Paradox, Prototyper Chronicles, Index Equals Zero, by Mark Lambert, illustrated by Brandon Scribner, narrated by Brian Safara. Prelude, Black Institutional Coffee and the Liquid Blue Shockwave of Elysium. It was a shade past midnight. Not that the concept of time meant much in the eternally shadowless chromescape of a vast subterranean laboratory far beneath the streets of a sleeping city. A small group of tired-looking men and women huddled over a laptop. Clad in lab coats, they spoke in hushed tones as together they scrutinized a complex array of graphs, reports, and readouts. Every so often, one of the experimental team would lift their head to glance across to a man lying motionless on a stainless steel examination table in the center of the room. This man was the test subject. He was why they were here. No one there knew his name. They knew everything else about this man. His blood type, his weight, the length of his fingernails, the complicated latticework of his subtle neurochemistry. Each member of the team could effortlessly list off what the test subject had eaten over the last month right down to the calorie. But the test subject's name? That was information well beyond any of their pay grades. The test subject groaned. His back arched as he writhed on the examination table, and a battery of medical units strapped to his body screeched an electronic alarm. LEDs speckled across the visor covering the test subject's face, lit up with a brief violent display of electronics fireworks, and then went dark. Alarms sounded, computers spat out error messages, and complex machineries clustered on the laboratory floor ground to a halt. Lab coats rushed into action. No! The test subject's voice came out hoarse, the dry, cracked sound of a human who hadn't spoken in days. Then a medic's nitro-gloved hands hovered over his agonized form, clasping a syringe filled with a neon blue liquid shockwave of chemical elysium. Deftly, the medic punctured the test subject's vein and drove the liquid home. The sweat-drenched man sighed and lay back on the examination table. Tech personnel rushed in to remove devices strapped to the helpless man's body while medics stabilized him. A hush finally fell over the room. The experimental team stared wide-eyed at one another, chests rising and falling fast in the aftermath of their shared adrenaline-spiked freefall. Another close call had come and gone. The lead experimentalist sighed and slumped in a chair, exhausted. He pinched the bridge of his nose. 
and drained the last cold dregs of bitter black institutional coffee. Failure again at 57%, he said quietly. A scribe entered the result into a laptop. It was the latest in a long, long line of dutifully recorded disappointments. The lead experimentalist sat back in his chair and surveyed the exhausted faces of each member of his team. Then his eyes strayed across to the test subject, now blissfully unconscious, and at the beginning of another long bout of mental and physical recovery. This isn't working, he said. Heads around him slowly nodded. He lifted his gaze to the security camera in the corner of the room and saw that it was firmly trained on him. He stared into the abyss that lay beyond its lens and spoke to the ever-observing mind that lived there. It's time we came up with a plan B. Thanks a ton for watching. You can head over to Amazon to purchase this book. It would really help support our channel. Thanks a lot. Have a great one.